at Jesus College for the Archaeological Review from Cambridge's inaugural conference, Modern Climate Change and the Practice of Archaeology. We brought together emerging and senior scholars to discuss how climate change is impacting the archaeological discipline and in turn how archaeology is responding to the threats posed by climate change. We were archaeologists, we were amongst the first who started to very clearly link climate change and cultural change. Um, I mean, I, 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 it, it goes, it was more than 150 years ago that archaeologists comfortably talked about um, how, how climate change, particularly towards the uh, end of the Ice Age period and the beginning of the Holocene, had a very pronounced impact on, um, on culture. I wanted to help organize this conference because it's such a pertinent topic uh, today but there's still so much disconnect between dis disciplines um, and it's so real on the ground. A lot of people don't realize how much is actually impacting cultures and, and it's inevitably changing them. Um, so I really thought this conference was important to bring different perspectives and to get different people talking about archaeology in the past but also how this is very much real to contemporary cultures today. I think climate change is a really complex problem and can't be solved through one discipline alone. Uh, so it's important that we address it through all sorts of angles and come at it with different ideas. I think archaeology particularly has a lot of answers because there's a lot of knowledge tucked away based on past societies and how they have been responding to environmental change. Um, and there's a, there's a lot that can be learned or can inspire new ideas of of how to adapt to current climate change. I'm just looking around, apart from well, one or two of us who are slightly older. You're, 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 um, you're all relatively young. It's great to see, but it's quite interesting that you organise a conference like this, that you don't get a cross-section age-wise of the agricultural community. Um, and most of my own colleagues, they're quite happy to study climate change. They're quite happy to continue to study it. We never dare to think, or to, no, never dare to start using that to try and influence policy, process, practice today. And we can only move so quickly to save as much as we can. So the more that I can learn from other people about how they're prioritizing the things that they're finding and how they're prioritizing the kind of places that they work, the better, the better off we'll be as we move into the future. And I was especially struck by, as, as the folks were talking about their work on the coastal environments, that has such incredible parallels with what I do. And I, and I had never really engaged with that that much before. But in both cases, it's relatively short time spans and some pretty remarkable potential for loss. And, and so can we work together to, to figure out the best possible alternatives and the best possible solutions to those, to those problems? And one of the things that I noticed was the same themes coming out from all the different papers. Um, all sorts of different sorts of heritage and all sorts of different sorts of threats posed by climate change to the specific heritage. But the, um, the similar themes emerge in terms of the urgency of threat and the importance of communication and engagement and working, but working within a robust research framework so that the actions that we take really to, to mitigate the impact of climate change on our heritage is done in such a way as to maximise the, the information and really have a, have a good system of, of, of prioritisation because I think another thing that came out is that we can't save everything unfortunately and, and we need to think very carefully about what we do decide to, to save and, and how we will make those decisions. I think the most exciting opportunities um, we picked up were how we can sort of use archaeology to influence policy and how we can start those communications um, and use the work that we're doing um, to sort of have an influence on future discussions of climate change. My takeaway to this group is if you have any engagement uh, or you wish to engage with international policy mechanisms and you think that you have something to add to the conversation, whether that's a peer-reviewed paper that might be relevant or ideas of how we can include archaeology, cultural heritage, historic preservation, into these, um, it would be great to get you and your work to the, the working group within the Warsaw Mechanism to just get more information to them and ensure that more and more voices from this community are heard in those international negotiations.